I am Larry Saperstein, also known as Big Red, and this is Julia Lester, or you may know her as Ashlyn. Yes, thank you so much for the intro, Larry. <laughs> um, here to moderate our conversation about the episode you just saw, please welcome Monica Tresandes, Director of Spanish Language and Latinx Media from GLAAD. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Julia. Hi, Larry. Thank you so much for being here. I would love to invite Frankie Rodriguez and Joe Serafini to come up here and talk with me about this episode, this Hi. wonderful episode. Hi, guys. Hi. Let's have a seat. And joining us on Zoom tonight will be Emilia Serrano, who is uh, the writer of this episode and the co-executive producer of the show. Welcome, and welcome everyone, and I would love to say a special bienvenida a todas las personas que nos están mirando esta noche de México, Centroamérica, Latinoamérica. Es un placer que estén con nosotros esta noche. Uh, tonight, we are going to talk about the show, we're going to talk about the episode, we're going to talk about some other exciting things, maybe, <laughs> perhaps. Um, and we want the audience to talk with us, too. We want questions from the audience. So please, 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 start asking away, put your questions in the chat, join us. Okay, are we ready? <laughs> yes, let's do it. <laughs> okay, um, let's talk a little bit, if, we, if you don't mind, Emilia, tell us about the significance of having a sort of non-traditional quinceañera. Because this quinceañera was a little different, but it wasn't really talked about in the show. So tell us what that was about. Well, we wanted really to, I mean, this is a testament to Tim Betterly, our um, executive producer and showrunner, is that we just want to tell the stories as we know them and experience them ourselves without over explaining anything. Um, and then we jokingly say also in under a half an hour. So we didn't want to say too much about it, let it happen organically and let people watch the story unfold. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's where a lot of it came from to just like let them have fun and let people kind of interpret it as, as, they, as they want to. Cool, and the show was inspired, the episode was inspired a little bit by your life as a Mexican-American woman, right? And by your daughter, too, from what I'm told? Yeah, so I had a very non-traditional quinceañera, and as we're talking about quinceañeras, I have a daughter about two years away from it, and another daughter who's a couple years away from it, and she's queer, and she asked me, you know, would I have to do the exact same things that I've been seeing. And that kind of inspired this moment right before the meeting where I thought, you know what? This quinceañera or quinceañero is really about embracing culture, how we see fit. And also just having it be filled with love and filled with people who kind of accept and embrace us as we go into, you know, different phases and journeys in our life. And so that really was, you know, a little bit of my daughter and my past experience and just wanting to do a great story for Frankie. And, you know, it all came together. And <laughs> thankfully, Tim Federley, without even missing me being, said, we're absolutely doing that episode. Oh, that's wonderful. Frankie, what was your reaction to finding out you were going to have a quinceañero? Um, I didn't think it was real at first. <laughs> I think I was a little bit like, what? I was very shocked. Um, but obviously so exciting. I remember, I think we found out at a cast meeting and I walked out of that meeting. I was like, uh, oh my gosh, it's going to happen. <laughs> and so just to see the way everything came together and just the way the episode came together and what we talk about in the episode. I mean, it's just a very special moment, and so I'm so happy with it. That's great. Your grandparents are from Mexico, right? And yes. Your parents are from here, and uh, you grew up uh, third generation Mexican-American. What was that like? What's that experience like for you? Yeah, well, we're still very traditional Mexican-American, so, um, you know, all the fun things that you get to carry on from your traditions kind of stay with you, so that part of it is awesome. And I grew up in a very um, Hispanic heavy uh, community, so just the fact that you have that built-in support from the very beginning. It's, it's awesome. Awesome. Have you been to a quinceañera? Oh my gosh, of course. It's been, a, it's been a minute. So if anyone wants to invite me, I'm ready. <laughs> uh, but no, there's so I'm much I'm sure fun. you'll get a few invitations. <laughs> Let's see. I can't wait. Uh, 428 invitations. Oh, wonderful. I love it. I'm ready. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, Carlos seems pretty secure, right? But in the last episode, we saw that he's not always... Secure. He feels like he doesn't fit in sometimes. Right. Do you ever feel that way too? 
Yeah, I mean, growing up, I definitely felt a little bit of um, like an outsider looking in. My interests were very like Broadway and musicals, and um, not everyone had that interest in a farm <laughs> town. So, <laughs> um, but it wasn't until I got started doing theater, and when I was a teenager, I started meeting other theater kids, and I was just like, oh my gosh, you can sing whenever you want, and like no one here is going to judge you for it. Um, so yeah, it's. Um, that's great. <laughs> something about theater is another thing. Yeah. People together. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Joe, fans are thrilled that <laughs> you two, Sevlos, are together and you're in every episode. Tell us about the homecoming episode for those who maybe didn't see it. Yes. Um, so the homecoming episode is sort of where you first kind of get to see Seb and Carlos meet each other. and. Uh, Carlos asks Seb to the homecoming dance and it's kind of a big deal because he's like, are you sure like we're gonna dance in front of like the non-theater kids? Um, but then they do and it's like this really beautiful moment and there's like not a question about it from anyone else around them. Um, and I just think that's such a beautiful moment. I think from then on it was just like, Seb was all the way. Right? <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> from then on, um, so, you two are dating, yes, in real life? <laughs> how did that happen? Oh my gosh, well look at this face, I mean, how could you not? Um, no, but I always tell the joke, like, once Joe, once I heard Joe play piano for the first time, it was like, over, I was like, uh, um, <laughs> but no, yeah, wow. it's, it was the piano, it was definitely the piano. <laughs> oh my gosh, I hope more than that. <laughs> I love for you. <laughs> well, no, I mean, of course, Frankie is just like such a fabulous human being. Um, um, for all, of course, he's like just hilarious and such a joy to be around, but also like a very hard worker. And I don't know, I just like was so enamored with him when I first met him. And oh. from then on, it was like, okay, lovely. I think we like each other. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> you admire each other yeah. too. How does the dynamic between Carlos and Seb compare to the dynamic between you? I think it's a little different, um, but I think there are still some similarities. At the end of the day, we're both theater kids, mm -hmm. and they are like, you know, theater kids at heart. So yeah. um, I think that similarity is there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not a farm boy. But. <laughs> You're not? <laughs> no, but, but he's from the farm. So I am from the farm. It's kind of like a switch up. But. Yeah. <laughs> For everyone, including Emilia, please, can you talk to us a little bit about um, how important it is to have representation, right? How important it is to have characters that viewers can relate to. Yeah. And did you have that growing up? Um, it was definitely something I noticed. I, there was not a lot of people that looked and acted like me on film and television growing mm -hmm. up. And so I think the, there's maybe about one where I'm just like, oh, that looks like mm -hmm. me, sounds like me, he acts like me. Um, but other than that, there wasn't really much. And so the fact that I'm here now and we kind of get to be the representation we didn't get to see growing up. I mean, that's like the best. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I saw some LGBTQ plus representation on TV, but it was more like adult audiences um, that it was sort of aimed towards. So to see yeah. it like on children and family programming like this show, I just think it's really beautiful. And yeah. I'm so honored that we get to be a part yeah. of it. It is beautiful. I never saw anyone like that when I was growing up. And you know, it's tough, especially when if you live somewhere where you can't be out and right. maybe your family doesn't support you or people at school don't support you. You see someone on TV and, and at least there's someone there, right? There's yes. a friend, there's hope. Yeah. So it's more than TV, it's more mm. than entertainment, it's hope, you yeah. know? Mm. So I think that's fantastic. <laughs> um, Emilia, how was the climb chosen for the song that Seb will play? Well, I have to say that the song climb was chosen by Tim Federley and I had mentioned that I had loved the song because I am, you know, my inner child is a high schooler. Yeah. So he said, he's, Joe's going to sing The Climb. And I think my tears were already ready. And then I saw the performance and I cried in my office and texted him. And um, he said, you know, a big reason is this just feels like the right song. It feels like the journey of the song. And it's just, you know, the, the moment that he's sharing with his boyfriend is we're going to overcome everything together and some things may be hard but we're going to get through it mm -hmm. and there was such a 
I think there was so much joy and positive in that song. I will listen to it again and again. Is that creepy, Joe? That yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's very nice. <laughs> Joe, were you familiar with the Miley Cyrus oh, of version? Of course. Are you of course. kidding me? Um, yeah, I mean, as soon as it came out, I feel like I was already like buying the sheet music online uh -huh. and going to sing it at the piano. So it really, I've been singing it at the piano since I was a kid, and now oh. I get to do it here, and that's just... What does it mean so. to you? I mean, you know, I think we all have these climbs in life, and I think, you know, everyone can relate to that idea of, you know, I don't, it doesn't really matter what this is getting me to, but just appreciating the journey that it takes mm. to get there. And I think, especially as LGBTQ youth,